Today we're on page one of our chapter four notes. So starting chapter four today, which is entitled Relations and Functions, we'll actually be covering pages one through four, um, and we will be leaving off some of the examples to do in class together. Okay, a relation is a set of ordered pairs. A relation may consist of a number or other items and may be represented in many ways. For example, as a set, a list, a table, a graph, or a mapping diagram. Examples of relations are, we have relation A, which is a set containing April 1, June 7, November 25. Relation B, the set of ordered pairs 2005, 2007, 1, 2010, 5. Relation C is listed as a table, our values of x. For an x value of 2, we have a y value of negative 3, x value negative 11, y value negative 3, x value negative 11, y value of 13. We have relation D that is a graph, looks to us like it's a cubic function. Relation E is this mapping. Um, we have 2 goes to a prime, 13 to prime, 9 to perfect square, and 5 to prime. The domain. The domain is a set of independent elements, the x values, or the inputs. When looking at a graph, a domain, that would be your x's, and you're looking at the leftmost point, to rightmost point. So when you're asked for a domain from a graph, for example, in relation D here, okay, right now our leftmost point would be here, but this arrow keeps going downward and outward towards the left, right? So if we keep going outward towards the left, we'll be at negative infinity, and then our rightmost point is this point right here, but again it has an arrow, so it keeps going upward and outward towards the right. So our domain here on the right-hand side would be positive infinity. So our domain in, from this graph would go from negative infinity to positive infinity. So all our x's would be all the real numbers. The range is a set of independent elements, or the y values, the outputs. And again, when we're looking at a graph, ranges are y's. And we're looking at the lowest point to highest point. List the domains and range of the relations above by completing the table below. Relation A is done for us. The domain is a set of inputs or our first elements. April, June, and November. The range is 1, 7, and 25. For relation B, our inputs is a set of 2000, 2007, 2010, and our range or our outputs or dependent elements is 5, 1. And that second 5 need not be written. For C, relation C, our domain, these are our inputs, our x values, 2 and negative 11. And our range, our outputs, our dependent values, our y's, negative 3, 13. Oops, sorry about that. Relation D, as I mentioned, our domain is all real numbers. And that can be written as, um, it's a capital letter R with um, a second vertical segment there. And our range, lowest to highest, again if we go back up, lowest point for now is here, but this keeps going downward to negative infinity, and highest point 
This keeps going upward to positive infinity. So our range is also all real numbers. And for E, our mapping, our domain, this is containing 2, 13, 9, and 5. And our range, prime, and perfect square. Function. Function is a set of ordered pairs where each element of the domain corresponds to only one element of the range. If an element of the domain is repeated, it's not a function. So we can have no repeats in the domain. Which relations from above are functions and why? Let's see. No repeats here, so A is a function b is a function, c is not because we have negative 11 twice, that repeats, um, d is, and e is. So that was a, b, d, and e are functions. For each input, there is only one output. For each input value, there is only one output. Next page two. Vertical line test. To tell if a graph is a function, draw vertical lines everywhere on the graph. If each vertical line intersects the graph only once, then it is a function. So in 1 through 6 here, each graph shows a relation on a set of coordinate axes. State the domain and range and tell whether each relation is a function. So three things here. Domain, range, and is it a function? Well, when we're looking at a graph, remember, for the domain, we're looking at the leftmost point, which would be here, and the rightmost point, okay? So actually, if you want to use your hands, kind of cover up. So our x values go from negative 4, right, to positive 5. And I'm going, but if there's an open at positive 2. So the domain here, <coughs> excuse me, using interval notation, this is from negative 4 to 2, union with 2 to 5. And 5 would have the bracket because it, 5 is included in the domain. The range, we want the lowest point to the highest point, right? Lowest to highest. So our y values go from negative 2 to positive 5. Um, we have a hole here, okay, but it's okay because it's solid on this side. And we have an open circle up at 5, so that'll have a, give us a parenthesis. So we have bracket negative 2 to 5. Now, is it a function? We draw vertical lines. If each vertical line intersects the graph at only once, then it is a function. So this is a function. Yes, it's a function. Number two, we have this parabola. Our domain, again, leftmost point to rightmost point. Leftmost point is here, but it has an arrow on it, so it keeps going upward and outward to the left. What's way out to left is negative infinity. Rightmost point is here. But again, it has an arrow. It keeps going upward and outward to the right. Way out to the right is positive infinity. So our range is all real numbers, or we can represent negative infinity to positive infinity, or we can write it as all real numbers. Our range, our lowest point, we do have a lowest point here at negative 4. Highest point keeps going upward, all the way upward to positive infinity. So our range is 
bracket negative 4 to infinity. Or symbolically, um, we could write this as, uh, let's see, kind of in set notation, instead of all y, such that y is greater than or equal to negative 4. So there's different ways we can write the range and domain. Um, is it a function? Drawing vertical lines? Yes. You can try number three. Right? The domain, so pause the video, try three. Leftmost to rightmost, negative two to positive four. Range, lowest to highest, negative 4 to positive 5. Is it a function? Yes, it passes the vertical line test. I'm going to slide over to number 5. Domain, leftmost to rightmost. Okay, leftmost point, negative 3, rightmost, there's an arrow, keeps going out to positive infinity. So negative 3 to infinity. The range, lowest point right now is here, but it has an arrow, so it keeps going downward. Highest point here, but it has an arrow, keeps going upward. So that would be all real numbers. Or interval notation, negative infinity, positive infinity. Is it a function? No. The vertical lines here intersect the graph more than once. No. It's not a function. Fails the vertical line test. Um, you can try 4 and 6 if you like. Otherwise, we will do these... Um, in class tomorrow. On to page three. Finding the largest possible domain or restricting domains. Find the largest domain of each function. Okay, so we have y equals 1 over x plus 5. We can put any value of x in here except for what? Well, what happens when we have a fraction? We cannot have a denominator of 0, because if we have a denominator of 0, then it would be undefined. So we can put any real number in here except what? In other words, we want to just focus on the denominator. The denominator cannot equal 0. The denominator cannot equal 0. So x plus 5 cannot equal 0. So if we Subtract 5, x cannot equal negative 5. Right? So this would be all real numbers except x cannot equal 5. Well, and look, that's like a double negative, so let's say except x equals 5. Another way of writing this is the set of all x's such that x does not equal negative 5. Yeah, make the correction of above. And the next one, y equals x plus 1 over x squared minus 2x minus 3. Again, we can put any x's in the numerator. That doesn't bother us at all. It's just a denominator. We know the denominator cannot equal 0. Right? So let's take the denominator, x squared minus 2x minus 3. That cannot equal 0. Factor it. Factors a negative 3 that add to negative 2, or negative 3 and positive 1. So x minus 3 and x plus 1 cannot equal 0. So x cannot equal positive 3, and x cannot equal negative 1. So we can write this as a set. Domain, again, is a set of input values, the set of x's, such that x does not equal 3 or negative 1.
next. And we can put anything in the numerator. That's not a concern. It's the denominator. We know that that denominator cannot equal 0. So 5x squared plus 1 cannot equal 0. Well, if we attempt to start solving this, let's see. So we'll subtract 1 because we know it's not factorable. We have 5x squared cannot equal negative 1. Divide by 5x squared cannot equal negative 1 fifth. Now, before we go ahead and try taking square roots, right, if we take an x value and square it, is it ever going to come out to equal a negative? No. Right? x squared will always be positive. x squared will always be positive. So our domain here is all real numbers. The domain would be all real numbers. Okay, we're going to say the next um, three, four tomorrow in class. Now, on to function. A function from set A, the domain, to set B, the range, whose range is equal to set B, meaning all of set B is used up by the range. So every, every member of your range must be used. Determine which of the following are on two functions. Okay, so 0 goes to 1, 1 to 3, 2 to 5, but these members of the range, the 0 and 2, they're not used. So this is not on two. Next. We have a relation set defined as xy such that y is equal to 2x, where x is an element of an integer. So x is an integer. So let's look at this. Um, so y equals, let me make a table here. If x is 1, then the y value is 2. If x is 2, then the y value would be 4. If x is 0, the y value would be 0. If x is negative 3, putting negative 3 in here, our y value is negative 6. Hmm. What do we notice about our y values? Right. Our y values are um, 0 and even integers whereas our domain was all integers, okay? So this is not onto. The range is zero and even integers. Whereas the domain was all integers. So the domain and range are not equal. Next we have the set of ordered pairs xy where y is equal to x and x is an element of, this is a symbol for element of, um, the real numbers. Well, whatever x is, y is. So your range and domain would be the same. So this would be on to because the range is all reals. Next, page four. Oh, our favorite, a word problem. An artist makes hand-painted greeting cards that she sells online for $3 each. In addition, she charges $3 for postage for each package of cards that she ships, regardless of size. The total amount Y that the customer pays for a package of cars, cards is a function of the number of cards purchased, X. 
write a relation described above as an equation. Okay, so we have selling cards, um, $3 each card with a shipping cost of um, $3. So y is the total amount, so y would have to equal 3 times x plus 3. What is the domain of the function? Well, we're not going to ship zero cards, so um, we would start with 1, and then 2, 3, 4, and so on. So those would be our positive integers. domain would be the po set of positive integers. Write four ordered pairs of the function. Okay, so if we replace 1 in for x, our y value is 6. If we put 2 in for x, 2 times 3 is 6, plus 3 is 9. 3 in for x, 3 times 3 is 9, plus 3 is 12. And let's jump to Five. five times three is fifteen plus three is eighteen. What is the range of the function? Well we can see they're all multiples of three. So we have multiples of three. Um, and they all start with greater than three. So the multiples of three, 3 greater than 3. Is the function 1 to 1? For each x, is there only one y? Yes. Okay, and the next two examples we're going to leave for um, in class tomorrow. So this concludes our video for tonight.